Hi, in this video I'll show you the working behind a 1200 watt switch mode power supply for the input section of our power inverter. The circuit takes in low voltage DC of about 12 volts and gives out a regulated high voltage DC of up to 320 volts. This is then fed to a H bridge inverter which switches this high voltage DC back and forth to give a modified sine wave AC or a pure sine wave AC depending on the driver section. This video focuses on the input DC to DC converter. The complete circuit is as shown. The heart of the circuit is the TL494 passive moderation IC. It's a good IC for use in switch mode power supplies, DC to DC converters and inverters. The IC comes in a dual line package of 16 pins and everything is connected as shown. It has two air amplifiers which can be used for feedback to the IC for precise output voltage regulation. Pin 1 and 2 are the inputs of the first air amplifier. Pin 15 and 16 are the inputs of the second air amplifier. The first air amplifier will be using it for current sensing and protection while the second air amplifier will be using it for output voltage regulation. The IC is configured to oscillate at a frequency of about 50 kHz and this is set by the timing capacity 1 of about 2.2 nanofarads and the timing resistor 1 of about 10 kilo ohms. The frequency formula is given by 1 out of a RTCT. Ensure the frequency you choose is between 50 and 100 kHz for the circuit to give 1200 watts. Pin 7 is ground. Pin 8 and 11 are the open correctors for the output transistors while pin 9 and 10 are the open emitters of the output transistors. Pull up pin 8 and 11 to the VCC input voltage of about 12 volts. Capacitor C3 stabilizes the voltage applied at the corrector inputs. Capacitor C2 stabilizes the input voltage DC. All the raw voltage capacitors are written for at least 25 volts. Pin 4 is the then time control pin. Pull this down to ground. When you apply a voltage between 0 and about 3.3 volts, the output then time increases from 0 up to 100%, meaning the output pass width will reduce or the duty cycle will lower. Pin 12 is the VCC. Pin 13 is the output control. Pull it up to 5 volts generated by the reference pin 14. When pin 13 is connected to 5 volts, the output transistors will be configured as a push-pull driver. And if you are to pull it to ground, the output transistors will work as a parent driver or a single ended driver. When the IC is biased as shown, it will generate two square wave passes at its emitter pins 9 and 10 as shown. These passes are complements of each other. When 9 is high, 10 is low and vice versa. Because the IC cannot give much current to operate at a frequency of 50 Hz, it gives about 200 milliamps. Even though this may work, it may cause the switching MOSFETs to overheat because the current is not sufficient to quickly change the gates and turn the MOSFETs on fully. I have included a current boost section made up of the bipolar transistors, the BD139 and BD140 for each of the outputs. The transistors are connected as shown. This will increase the current from the IC to give a much higher current of more than 1 ampere which is good enough to turn on the MOSFETs quickly at this high frequency. Basically this to work as a voltage follower. Let's say in the first case you have a high output at pin 9 and a low output at pin 10 as shown. The transistor Q1 will be on because it's NPN but Q2 will be off. The transistor Q4 will be on and put the gates of the MOSFET Q4, Q6 and Q7 to ground ensuring they remain off. The transistor Q3 will be off. When Q1 conducts, it creates a current path through to the gates of the MOSFETs through their respective gate resistors R9, 10 and R11 are shown and this causes the MOSFETs to conduct. When the MOSFETs Q8, Q9 and Q10 conduct, they create a current path through from the input VCC voltage of 12 volts through the right hand side of the primary winding of the transformer, through the MOSFETs, through the primary of the current transformer and to ground as shown. This marks the first half cycle. After some time, the output at pin 9 goes low and that at pin 10 goes high. The transistor Q2 now turns on but Q1 turns off. Q2 pulls down the gates of the MOSFET Q8, Q9 and Q10 to ground ensuring they turn off quickly. But now Q4 turns off and Q3 conducts. This creates a current path through from VCC 
and delegates of the MOSFETs Q5, Q6, and Q7, causing them to turn on. When the MOSFETs conduct, they create a current path flow from the input VCC through the left hand side of the primary winding, through the MOSFETs, through the primary of the current, sensing transformer, and to ground as shown. This marks the second half cycle and complete one oscillation. This repeats over and over again about 50,000 times per second. All the gate resistors R6 through to R11 are about 39 ohms and their at least half a watt. The MOSFETs are the IRF3205. They are written for a drain source voltage of about 55 volts and a continuous drain source current of 98 amperes. If you power about 3 of those, you should comfortably handle more than 120 amperes and so they can easily handle 1200 watts without a problem. The power transformer is a ferrite cone power transformer. It is an ETD54 core. This is good enough to handle 1200 watts at a frequency of about 50 kHz. Here's a simple chart which you can use to find any other suitable core to handle the power capacity you desire. The primary turns are 2 turns on each half and on the secondary you have 60 turns. For the primary you need an enameled copper wire of AWG gauge 24 and you need to parallel at least 30 of those to safely handle more than 100 amperes without overheating. For the secondary side you need two paralleled AWG24 enameled copper wire to safely handle at least 5 amperes. On the primary side you have a simple snubber network made up of the capacitor C4 and the resistor 12 and the resistor 13 and capacitor C5. This just basically shot any voltage spike generated across the primary winding and protect the voltage across the drain and source of the MOSFET from rising to dangerous levels. The capacitors are 0.1 microfarads and written at least 100 volts and the resistors are 27 ohms and written at least 3 watts. On the output, the AC is rectified by the full bridge rectifier made up of the downs D1 through to D3. These are fast recovery downs such as the UF543. Use downs which can handle peak currents of at least 5 amperes. The inductor L1 and the capacitor C6 will filter this to obtain a smooth DC voltage. The inductor L1 protects the bridge downs from blowing up as the bulk capacitor C6 is changing. It's written 400 volts and at least 2200 microfarads. You can parallel lower capacitance capacitors but ensure that the voltage rating is at least 400 volts. So on this rail now you have your high voltage DC. To stabilize the output, a feedback network made up of the potentiometers R15, RV1 and R14 is connected as shown. By adjusting the potentiometer RV1, you will alter the feedback voltage to the secondary amplifier of the IC and this you can adjust the output voltage. For the air amplifiers, the way they work is that Whenever the voltage input at the non-inverting inputs is higher than that at the inverting inputs, the output duty cycle will be lower and vice versa. So for feedback, you need to apply a voltage to the non-inverting inputs of the IC and you need to apply a fixed voltage at the inverting inputs of the IC. For example, at pin 15, I've applied about 2.5 volts drawn from the reference voltage of 5 volts at pin 14 and a potential divider made up of R2 and R3 of equal resistance. So you'll have about 2.5 volts here. The same for the faster amplifier. Find about 2.5 volts at the inverting input pin 2. And for the non inverting input, I'll over feedback to monitor the primary current and provide feedback whenever it exceeds a certain value. For current sensing, you can use a shunt current resistor, but this will dissipate a lot of power and lower the efficiency. You can use such a circuit made up of a current transformer. The primary side has about 1 ton and the secondary side is made up of about 200 tons or 100 tons on each half side of the secondary winding. This transformer is usually a toroid so that the 1 ton is basically like a shunt connected across ground and the source of the MOSFETs. So the way this works is that as the MOSFETs are switching, there will be a passing voltage at the primary and this will reduce a passing voltage on the secondary. The more the current, the more will be the magnetic 
flux and the more will be the voltage induced on the secondary side. The diodes D6 and D5 rectify the secondary alternating current to DC and the small capacitor C7 over 100 nanofarads will filter this DC so that you can obtain a reference voltage and feed this to the non-inverting input of the faster amplifier through a potentiometer of about 100 kilo ohms RV2. And you can adjust the potentiometer to set the maximum primary current that you want to flow through the MOSFETs. That marks the end of my tutorial and I hope you have enjoyed and learned something new. If so, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, check out some of my other videos, share with your friends, subscribe to my channel, have a nice time and I will see you in the next video.